You're listening to a podcast from evidencenetwork.ca, making evidence matter in Canadian health policy. Dylan Cohen is an Indigenous youth from Manitoba who used to be in government care. He's currently a youth organizer with First Call BC Child and Youth Advocacy Coalition, where he creates opportunities for youth who are in care or from care through public policy justice. In his op-ed for evidencenetwork.ca, Dylan says we are neglecting our responsibility to kids in care. He says providing youth in care with comprehensive supports to age 25 should be an essential first step. Here's his story. Hello, my name is Dylan Cohen. I'm 22 years old. I feel inspired by all of the youth that I see coming out of care. When I see these kids surviving and thriving, I know that we are doing some things right and it gives me energy to work. One of the things that comes up for us as foster kids a lot is stigma for just being in care and an idea that foster kids are lazy or that we've you know, been dealing with all this stuff and we should really just get over it. And it's not really taking into account the complexities of our lives at home before we came into care and then really our, our really tumultuous lives while we were in the system. I lived in several different foster homes and I originally came into care with my twin sister, Haley, whom I love so dearly. And while the first home really was a a toxic and abusive time, I ended up uh, moving and my sister stayed and I spent the next few months homeless and dealing with some couch surfing and some pretty uh, vulnerable situations. And then eventually after a couple more foster homes, I ended up on the tuition waiver program at the University of Winnipeg. Um, And I'm a success story, definitely. Even finishing high school in Manitoba puts me in uh, the the minority for kids in care. And the fact that I went to university puts me even further into uh, a really successful outcome. But we know that the vast majority of us aren't getting that far. Most kids that are being taken into care are coming in contact with the system as a result of neglect, not abuse. So poverty or inadequate housing or drug abuse or substance abuse or addiction. These are all things that factor into why a kid might come into care. And it's something that we don't need to necessarily be apprehending for. It's really simple to ensure that there's enough food in the house. You know, I grew up and we were very food insecure and who knows what my life might might have been like if there had always been a stocked fridge. I know that my time in care cost the government, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And what could that have looked like if the supports were really provided to my family before I came into the system? I know my time in care wasn't informed by my agency's budget. It may have been very abstractly to me, but when I was thinking about the foster home breakdown or the lack of support I was getting at 18, I wasn't imagining the hundreds of millions of dollars that Child and Family Services got every year. What I saw was the supports that my peers were getting and my friends not from care and what that didn't look like for me. In Canada, most young people still live with their parents. And in today's uh, economic climate and, and the labor market, We're seeing more and more young people still dependent on their parents in some way. I know many of my peers in university were still living at home or had their rent paid or some other support while they were going to school. And that's just not a a support that youth from care see all the time. What we know is that most social workers are greatly overworked and some of them have caseloads of maybe 40 youth that they have to see once a month. And that means that there's not really a lot of time for intimate case management or really checking in on the youth that you're responsible for as a social worker. So for me, the people that I called were my friends' parents when I could. And often a phrase we say from the youth from care world is that Google is our parent, right? That we're looking up everything. I remember, like, I learned to to shave. I learned basic life skills from Googling YouTube videos about them. For me, I I wish that I had a number to call well into my 20s, and I've had to create that. I've had to find new people in my life that I can lean on as mentors and supports, and I know that that's a really hard thing for a lot of people, like, for example, my twin sister, who has struggled with some of those ideas. So... I'm glad that I have the social skills and the resources that I need to survive right now, but I know that my thriving is the 
outcome of, of luck. And for the vast majority of us, we're really struggling. So I wish that I had a permanent support and people that I really could count on for my entire life. And that's not going to happen. So I think about what kind of policy tools we can put in place to make that change effective and just. You've been listening to a podcast from evidencenetwork.ca, making evidence matter in Canadian health policy. Connect with the latest nonpartisan health research from experts across Canada and around the world, or sign up to receive our free monthly e-newsletter at www.evidencenetwork.ca. You can also subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. Evidencenetwork.ca is funded by the Canadian Foundation for Healthcare Improvement, the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, Research Manitoba, and the University of Winnipeg.